Welcome to Winning Secret TV. God will fight your battle. Exodus chapter 14 verse 14. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. God fighting our battles is a divine assurance anchored on the fact that we are following his will and leading. Therefore, to qualify for God to fight for you, you must abide by his commandments and lead. The promise in our anchor scripture was coming at the instance of the departure of the Israelites in obedience to God's instruction through Moses. God fought all their battles as long as they walk in obedience to his commands and leading. Even when they were challenged at the Red Sea with the Red Sea in their front and the Egyptians who are in their hot pursuit to either return them to Egypt or destroy them at their back. But God rose and fought their battle for them. In truth and confirmation of his words, that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro to protect the righteous as captured. In the second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, to shew himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Incidentally, the name of this channel has been changed to Winning Secret TV. We just changed its name from Positive Thinking TV to Winning Secret TV, but all of our content remains the same. Thank you very much. All right. God characteristically intervenes when the enemy brings war or battle to his people. And he had always ensured the victory of his people, as none can win a battle against God. As we saw in verse 13 of our anchor scripture. Exodus chapter 14 verse 14. God didn't only deliver them, he also fought their enemies and destroyed them. That is why it is dangerous to fight whom God is leading or to fight who God is not fighting. Especially those on a divine assignment for God. Because when God sends a person, it becomes his duty to protect or fight for the person and by extension, provide and supply also his needs. We saw a whole lot of that in the journey of the Israelites to the promised land, Canaan. As long as they, Israelites, remain in his will and followed as he leads through Moses, he didn't allow any nation to do them wrong nor any nation to win them in the battle. As confirmed in Psalms chapter 105 verse 13 to 15 which reads, When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong, yeah, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Thus has been the way of God, and his position for his children. Until tomorrow, God is still in the business of fighting his people's battle, especially when they are deserving it. The question is, when is a person deserving for God to fight his or her battles? And what qualifies or entities a person for God to be fighting his battles? Well, the answer is found in the scriptures, particularly in Numbers chapter 23 verses 20 to 23. The scripture made it very clear there that God fights only for a just course. Because God is righteous, holy, fair, and just and as such, deals with men according to his justice and judgment. He does not prefer one over another for no just course. He does not take sides with the guilty, against or at the detriment of the innocent. There is no unfairness, unjustness or injustice, or favoritism with God. Peter discovered this and stated, in Acts chapter 10 verse 34 to 35. Then Peter opened his mouth, and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him, and worketh righteousness, is accepted with him. God is the creator of all. He is God of justice and judgment. Meaning, the person that is seeking justice, or vengeance from God, must himself be just. In human parlance, it is said, he that goes to equity, must do so with clean hands. God does not fight a fight, of shame or blame. God fights, only the battle, of righteousness, equity, justice, and judgment. When a person, lives his life in the fear of God, God is obliged, to protect him against, the haters of good and God. The criterion, for God to fight your battle, is that you must be a child of God. You must belong to God, by will or volition. Someone may ask, how can I become God's own again, seeing that, it is him that, made me. Jesus, 
answers that question in John chapter 1 verse 12, he says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That is why, I talked about will and volition earlier. Yes, God created us all, but he has given us, the free will, to choose either to follow him, or otherwise. While obedience has reward, and disobedience has punishment. He does not compel any by crude force. He allows us the choice, to choose to follow him, or otherwise. This can be found, in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Still, on becoming children of God, Jesus said in, John chapter 5 verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Thus, we become children of God, by choosing to obey and follow God. And concerning qualification, for being guarded and protected by God. In Numbers, chapter 23 verses 20 to 23 spelled it out. Numbers chapter 23 verse 20 to 23, the Bible gives clear guidelines and qualifications, to be protected and fought for by God. It says in verse 23, Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel, according to this time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what hath God wrought. In verse 21, God stated the anchor reason for such assurance, and quarantine. In verse 23, he says, that why he would fight for Jacob, and will not allow any evil, enchantment or divination, against Jacob, is anchored on the fact that, he hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen, perverseness in Israel, the Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. Here God makes it clear, that why he would fight for Jacob, neither because his name was Jacob, nor because he is so handsome, nor because he is of the human lineages of Abraham, but because he had not seen any iniquity, or perverseness in him. In another word, Jacob is innocent, by his divine judgment, justice, and mercy. This principle or policy remains the same even today. It hadn't changed, because God does not change. In Malachi, chapter 3 verse 6 he says, For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. God's criteria remain the same, if any desires his or her battles to be fought for him or her by God. He must be innocent, and always be careful not to violate God's divine laws and principles. It was the same rules for the Israelites, during their movement and even the sojourning, in the promised land. God fought for them, when they live and work in accordance with his status, and precepts, and leaves them to their human strength, which consistently failed them, when they deviate, reject God, and turned away from God, his statutes, and commandments. And in each occasion, it had ended them in calamitous and catastrophic. Therefore for you child of God, the redeemed of the Lord, fear not. Thought you might have derailed, sinned, or gone the wrong way. God is calling you, saying, Return unto me, and I will abundantly pardon you, and fight your battles, against the enemy that made you derailed. What is waiting? Now is the acceptable time. He says, Come unto all you, that labor and heavily burdened, and will give you rest. So, come, come, come unto Jesus, and he will satisfy the desires of your soul, and restore your dignity. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, it is for your love and grace, that we were not consumed. Now, that you have brought us this far, please dear Lord, forgive our sins, and iniquities, and grace us with your glory and power, to continue to be victorious, over every obstacle that the enemy may want to bring, on our ways to delay, destroy or derail us, thank you for answering, in Jesus' precious name we prayed. Amen. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our video. We want to give you another interesting video to watch next. 
Also, our team would appreciate it if you could like this video, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends on social media. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Winning Secret TV, to not miss out on other exciting videos that we post practically every week. Click on any of the videos you will see on the screen carefully handpicked for you to enjoy at the end of this video. You may leave your comment or prayer requests in the comment box and we shall respond to you accordingly. God bless you.